White Plume, thank you for your time today. I hope that this will be helpful for you. Uh, the goal for this webinar uh, is for people who are already White Plume clients, uh, particularly we're going to be talking about Excel and Mobile today. Some of you may know a little bit, some of you may, be, may know a lot, some of you may know nothing um, about Excel and Mobile, but I'm going to move through this quickly, uh, give you just kind of a quick overview of what we're trying to accomplish today, and I'll make sure that we leave time for questions uh, at, at the end of our time today. So if you've not already, take a moment to find the questions section in the GoToWebinar control panel so that you can ask those questions if you have them. Um, so th the first thing that we want to do is I'm going to give you some background information on um, Excel Mobile. Kind of where did it come from? Why did we build this product? What do some clients use it for? And, and then we'll jump in and get a little bit more detail on what Excel Mobile is, what problems does it solve, and then I'll get into a, a brief demonstration where we'll go through and take a look at Excel Mobile. Um, I'll do that on both a uh, PC web browser um, and also do it through uh, an iPhone just so you can see that both ways. And then, like I said, I'll make sure that I leave plenty of times for questions at the end. Um, so some background information on Excel Mobile, uh, just to start off with. Um, what we saw our clients doing is, and everybody on, on the webinar today is, is doing this in some way, shape, or form, they're using either Excel Pass or Excel Capture, right? They're either using their EHR or they're using the White Plume Electronic Super Bill to capture the charge data. Uh, they do that typically, you know, at the point of care by the provider. The billing data flows to the back office where they use Excel Smart to validate that charge data, correct any problems, any denials that they see. Uh, they'll try to make sure that they prevent that. And that's what they do with Excel Smart before they send the charge data to the practice management system via HL7. You know, our goal at White Plume has always been to protect doctors time protect their productivity right because our doctors are the only people that are taking care of patients they're the only people generating revenue for the practice but it's equally important to make sure that we get the right code the first time right how do we do that without turning our doctors into coders how do we make sure that our claims are going to get paid completely and correctly the first time that's what white plume has always done and that, that's what we'll always do going forward um, that's where we add value and we ask our clients, hey, what do you like about White Plume? What do you love about White Plume? This is what we typically hear. We hear about how easy it is for the doctors, how fast it is for them to put that information in very, very quickly in a way that protects their muscle memory. You know, we hear about clients who love that you can automate the data entry process. We don't have to key this information into our practice management system anymore. We've automated that process they make sure that they do it very, very quickly, right? There's not a lot of time between when the patient was seen and when the charge is posted to the practice management system. And they're making sure that they do that correctly, right? Uh, we're reducing the denial rate, preventing denials in the future. You know, that's a big value to our clients. And many of you are probably doing that through custom rules in Excel Smart. You can use those to prevent denials. You can use those to make sure you're capturing all of the revenue opportunities and, and the number one thing that we hear from our clients is they love our white plume support. So with all of that being said, there were still places that our clients couldn't use white plume. There were still places where they had manual charge entry, where this information was still being captured on paper. And so that's where the idea for Excel Mobile came from looking around, hearing from our clients saying, there are still places that we're not able to automate. Why not? Where are these areas of opportunity? Um, and so here's what we've seen. Uh, sometimes it's surgery charges, right? You've got physicians that are going to the hospital, they're going to a surgery center, um, and they're still doing that through an op report. They're doing it through um, a surgery cheat sheet. Uh, it could be, for some of you that are orthopedic practice, it could be your PTOT. Maybe you have different systems uh, for those particular specialties or some of those ancillary services. Uh, for some of you, it may be hospital charges, where you've got doctors that are on call, they're seeing patients at the hospital, whether that's uh, inpatient admits, whether it's trauma call, but those hospital charges are being filled out on rounding sheets or note cards or sticky notes, right? 
Uh, another place we, we've seen clients do this process manually is through nursing home charges. Maybe you have some providers who go visit patients in the nursing home. And in what we hear time and time again, you know, why not? It could be lots of different reasons as to why they're still doing it manually, why they still have a paper-based process for that. It could be that it's outside of the clinic. It's outside of the four walls of the practice. And that means that it's difficult. Uh, you don't have all the support staff around the provider, right? The, the physician, he or she, is kind of out on their own, right? You know, maybe it's because they aren't, you don't schedule appointments for those type of visits, right? Because you don't know who's coming in when you're on trauma call, obviously, right? It could be that you don't have access to your infrastructure, right? There's, they don't have, they're not your own PCs, they're owned by the surgery center. You can't put your software on those PCs. You don't have access to your server, to your network from those particular locations, right? Um, it could be, it's because, and this is always my favorite, is that's the way we've always done it, right? A lot of times you see places where you still have the old manual paper-based process because you've always done it that way and you really haven't thought about is there a better way to do it. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to give you some ideas of, of how to handle that today. So what we did is we looked at this and said, okay, is there a way that we can help our clients solve those problems? And the way that we're doing that is with a, another charge capture option called Excel Mobile. And so what Excel Mobile does is, is another option. This is not, it does not necessarily replace Excel Pass or Excel Capture. Most of our Excel Mobile clients use Excel Mobile for some of their encounters. Maybe it's their surgery charges and their office charges are being used through Excel Capture. Okay, so it is usually additive. It's usually not replacement. It's a complementary product. Um, so, so hope, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a framework of what it looks like from a big picture. And, and let me tell you a little bit more about Excel Mobile. So the reason why we developed this was to try to help clients fill some of those manual gaps that they were still doing, whether it was their hospital charges or their surgery charges, some of their ancillary services. So what we did was we built a web-based application. All of the data is encrypted and motion and at rest, so it is HIPAA compliant. And what that means is it allows your clinical team, your billing team, your administrative team, all have access to the same application. And it doesn't matter where they are, and it doesn't matter what device they use. Right? So if they want to use an iPad, they can use an iPad. If they've got an Android device or an iPhone, uh, they can use that. Uh, employees that are in the clinic, in the office at their desk, can access it through their PC. Right? As long as you know the URL and the username and the password, you have secure access to this application. Right? Everybody has real-time access to the data. So if you've got a physician that updates it over at the surgery center, the billing team has immediate access to that. And that's important because that means that the charges can be batched in Excel Smart as soon as they are completed. What we're trying to do there is eliminate the, the lag time, right? So that you're not waiting on um, the physician to bring the data back to the clinical office or bring the data back to the billing office you can cut down on that lag time. It also allows you to run all of those charges through your Excel of Smart process, right? You've, you've, most of you have a very good process for your office charges, right? But what about your surgeries? Are you running those through Excel of Smart? Are you getting the value of Excel of Smart there? What about for your hospital visits or your nursing home visits? The real question is, what charges are you still using a manual paper-based process for, because uh, many times Excel Mobile can help fix that issue. Your custom rules can be built. If you have different rules that you want to apply to Excel Mobile charges, you can use that in your custom rules. And then, of course, it's still going to leverage your existing HL7 interfaces. You shouldn't need a new interface in place to make Excel Mobile work will use the interface with your practice management system that already exists. So the problems that we're trying to solve with Excel Mobile is obviously we want to make it fast and easy for the physician, right? No more 
capturing data on scraps of paper or on rounding lists or sticking those in your pocket and losing them, forgetting to turn them in. Right? One of the challenges that we hear is that if you're not scheduling appointments for some of these types of encounters, nobody knows besides the physician who they saw. It's really hard to go back and recreate that. If we can put Excel and Mobile in their hands, it makes that process much, much easier for them. It gets the data from the doctor to your revenue cycle team much, much faster and reduces your charge lag. Right? It makes it so that you have access to that anywhere. If you're in the hospital and you have your phone in your pocket, you can access the application. Right? It makes that infrastructure much, much easier. If you want to sit down at, at, a, um, at a nursing station and pull up a PC, you can do it there as well. Right? It's just like online banking. As long as you know the URL and the username and password, you have access to the application securely and on any device of your choosing. It's web-based, so that means there's not software to install on the device. That also means no data is stored on the device. Right? So if you have a doctor who loses an iPhone, um, you, you, don't, you don't have that uh, HIPAA concern there either. Right? That means that all charges are routed through Excel Smart. We can make sure that you're using all of the validation power of Excel Smart uh, to prevent denials and capture all of your revenue, and obviously it's supported by the same White Plume support team um, that you know and love. So, so that, hopefully that gives you a little bit of background information on Excel and Mobile, what we're trying to do. The real questions I think that you need to ask yourself are, where do you still have a manual process? Where do you still have a paper-based process? Um, and, and then starting to really dig into the why. Why are you still doing it that way? Um, we can talk, we can get you set up with uh, some of our technical team, with our client account execs, for each of you to kind of talk through your particular workflow. But what I wanted to do was jump in and, and show you how it works, show you what it looks like, um, show you how it works on my PC, then I'll switch over and show you what that looks like um, on my iPhone so you can see it both ways. I think that'll be, I think that'll be helpful for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle over to my browser. Uh, so I, I'm using Chrome, but obviously you can use IE, you can use Firefox. Uh, it's just a personal preference for me. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and log in. So I'm going to type in my username, type in my password, um, and log in. And what I'm doing is I've, I've logged in as, as Matthew Menendez, Dr. Menendez, and I have um, my appointment list for the day. Right. So if I was using this um, for uh, my surgeries for the day, this might be in my default view, right? I'm still scheduling those in my practice management system. Those are flowing over across an existing HL7 interface, so it makes it very, very easy for me to see the surgeries that I have listed. Again, I could do this on my phone as well. I'll show you that example, uh, but I'm just starting with the, with the PC for now, All right? So you can see I already have one appointment that's in progress. When I click on that, it brings me to the encounter summary screen for this particular patient. You'll see that I have no diagnosis codes or procedure codes at this point. That's okay. I can start with my procedure codes. I can start with my diagnosis codes. And this is going to look a little bit different than Excel Capture uh, for those of you who are familiar with that. Uh, but let me start with my diagnosis codes. I'll click on Add Diagnosis, and it brings up my favorites list. Right. This is a list that we customize. It can be customized down to the provider-specific level of their most commonly used diagnosis codes. Uh, this particular provider still has those listed in ICD-9. Um, they will see the custom scenario pop-ups for those of you who are Excel Capture clients. Uh, you'll see that in just a minute. Uh, but we build this list custom, so if you would prefer uh, to list out the ICD-10 codes, uh, that you're using most commonly, we can certainly build it that way as well. Uh, for example, if I've got a patient that um, will do a patella dislocation, when I click on that, you'll see it obviously gives me my custom scenario, my pop-up, the available ICD-10 choices, and again, it organized those for me. Um, you'll see the uh, type, civilization, dislocation uh, on the vertical axis, the laterality up on the horizontal axis, so if I've got a lateral dislocation of the right patella, uh, it's one click. It chooses that for me. Uh, I'm finished. It makes that very, very easy for me. It uses the same 
custom scenarios that are being used in Excel at Capture today, right? So those are customizable at the client-specific level. Um, then I'm ready to add my procedure code. I can do that as well. Um, let's say that I had, um, what was it for that? We did a, um, scroll down real quick, and there's my rotator cuff repair. I can click right on the text. It'll bring that back to my summary screen if I need to uh, do any linking. If I need to add any modifiers, I can do that. Uh, when I'm finished, all I have to do is hit Save and Complete. It brings me back to my appointment list. Show me that shows me that that one is completed. I'm I'm finished. I'm done. I don't have anything else that I need to do on that. We're trying to make that process as easy as possible for your physicians. Right? It makes it easy and fast for the doctor to choose the right codes, and then gets that data available to your revenue cycle team so that they can do any of the cleanup work necessary in Excel Smart. Right? Excel Smart will look for missed modifiers. Excel Smart will make sure that the CPT codes are in the proper RVU order. Um, it will make sure that you've got diagnosis and procedure codes that are supporting one another. Any payer-specific requirements that you have can be built into Excel Smart, just like it does for your office charges today. All right? Uh, so that's one example. Let me show you another example real quick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch uh, my view real quick, and we will go through and look at what this might look like if you were in a a hospital rounding scenario, okay? So we'll, we'll do that a little bit differently. Um, so what you see here is a rounding list that I have. Again, for Dr. Menendez, I've got all of my patients that are on my uh, census for the day. I've got it sorted by room number. Um, you can see I've already seen Thomas Jefferson uh, in room 409. Uh, when it's time to see Michael Jackson, let me show you how that works. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Copy Last. Um, and what that does is it takes the diagnosis codes and the procedure codes from the most recent encounter and pulls them forward to today, right? So if nothing has changed, uh, still UTI, uh, acute uh, chronic uh, CHF, um, type 2 diabetes, still level 2 hospital visit, I don't have to do anything else. I hit copy last, I hit save and complete, and I'm done. Two clicks, very, very fast, right? Now, when I have something that is a bit more complicated, right? That's when I might have to go in and make some changes, right? So um, if I wanted to say, you know, this is, this is not what I did, I can delete those, click the Add Procedure. Again, it'll bring up my procedure list. If I want to scroll down, I can use the quick scroll, you know, here, right? Subsequent hospital care, level three, make my selection, do my linking, I'm not quite done. I want to come back to that. I might have saved it in progress. It'll mark that as in progress rather than completed so that I can come back to that later. Right? Again, if it's in progress, the billing team cannot pull that into Excel Smart. That's my way as, as, on, as part of the clinical team of saying, I'm not finished with it yet. Please don't take that. You cannot take that until it's marked as completed. Once it is assembled into a batch in Excel Smart, you know, that encounter becomes read-only here in Excel Mobile. I can still view it, I can still look at it, but I can't make any changes to that encounter here. If I want to make a change there, I need to talk to the billing team. All right. So I, hopefully that gives you a little bit of an overview of what that looks like in Excel Mobile, how it works. Let me do, the, let me do this. I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to switch over and do it on my iPhone, just so that you can have a, a sense of what that looks like, how, how that works. So bear with me just a moment as I, as I switch the, um, the, the presenter here. I've got to switch to my, my Mac. Okay, so in just a moment you should be able to see um, just a, a back background of the beach, but you should see my, my iPhone here. This is a, uh, an iPhone simulator um, that, that we use uh, here in our, our development team. So what I do is it's a web-based application, so I could launch Safari uh, to get out there, but what I'm actually going to do is a lot of our clients put a desktop short top shortcut. Uh, what that means is that they don't have to remember the URL. Uh, it'll let me 
click on that, it'll launch Safari, bring me to the correct address, and then let me enter my login information here. So what you'll see is the same login screen. It's formatted a little bit differently um, because of the uh, because of the reduced screen size that's available um, on the iPhone compared to the uh, web browser. But I wanted to start with the web browser so you get a feel of what that looks like before we switch over and do this here on the iPhone. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my username. I'm going to type in my password just like I did before. And what you'll see is it's going to bring up my rounding list. Now you'll see this is the exact same information that I had available to me on the desktop application, right? So you can still see the exact same information. I see Thomas Jefferson. I see that that encounter was completed. If I wanted to go in and take a look at that, I can certainly do that. Right? I click on completed, it gives me all the information. If I need to make a change here, I can do that too. Right? I said, you know what, uh, I really don't want to use that, that lower back pain code. I click on it, I can get rid of it, hit save and complete, it updates all that information. That's the beauty of having this as a web-based application. I've got the real-time information. There's not any thinking that I have to do or anything like that. Right? And so if I wanted to go do a new encounter, you know, let's do one from scratch for Donald Duck. I'll click on new. It won't have any diagnosis or procedure code information in here at all. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add diagnosis. And again, I've got my same favorites list right here. Right? I can scroll down. I can use the quick scroll on the right if I want to do that. Um, I can use the search at the top. I can search by code or by description. So if there are codes that I did not have listed out, right, if I'm looking for, you know, plantar fasciitis, for example, I can click that in, I'll get my search results, and I can make my selection right here, right? So what that lets me do is I, I can create a favorites list that's very short, that's workable for me, right, but I don't have to have all of the possible codes listed there because I have them available in the search box for me at the top. I can do that for procedure codes. I can do that for diagnosis codes. Um, now, typically what the, the workflow that the, the doctors who use this do is they won't select a diagnosis code and then go back to the encounter summary screen. That's just an extra step. So once they select their diagnosis codes, they'll hit toggle to CPT, and it just flips over to their CPT list, right, so that they can scroll down and pick the, the, the CPT code that they're looking for, right? They select their codes, again, back to the encounter summary screen. Once they're done, save and complete, and it'll bring them back to their rounding list, back to their appointment list, depending on how they're using the application, right? Um, some people use that, again, for inpatient visits. Some people use that for surgeries, ancillary visits, uh, nursing home visits, it's really just an application to try to say, where are we still doing this manually? How do we automate that process and make it very, very easy for, for our physicians? Um, so I hope that, that, I hope that that's helpful, gives you at least a little bit of a visual to, to start to think about how you might use that in, in your practice. Uh, we are certainly happy to, to kind of get in there and talk through the details with you, because um, Different practices use it different ways. Um, so if you want to do that, the, the best place to start um, is with your client account exec. If you don't know who that is, um, just let me know and we'll get you in touch with the right person. Um, one more thing that I wanted to show you real quick is sometimes there may be a patient who's not on your list, right? Patient that's not on my list, what do I do? How do I add them, right? Can I still see that patient? Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to go up to the top, right, where you see patient search. And the reason we've done this is it searched for all of the existing patients in your white plume database, um, which, which is being fed by your practice management system. This prevents me from creating duplicates. But if I do have a patient uh, who I've never seen before, we've never seen before in the office, uh, I can still see that patient as well. Um, so let, let me do this real quick. What I'll do is say we're searching for a patient 
and I, I'm going to say that I'm looking for, um, uh, let's say I'm looking for Julio Jones, for example. I'll search for the patient with the last name Jones, and you'll see that a lot of them are here, right? I see Johnny, I see Joyce, I don't see a Julio, right? So if I, if I have a patient that is not, if that's on my list, it's very easy, I just click on their name. For a patient who's not on my list, what I'm going to do is click the green button here at the bottom. It says create new patient. And what that does is it allows me to continue to enter additional information, right? I don't have to type Jones again, right, because I don't want to put that information in twice. But maybe I'll put in first name, last name, and then I'll put in date of birth, right? Uh, why don't we do an April Fool's Day maybe here for us today? And what I'm going to do here is just putting in enough information so that the staff later can come in and make sure that we register this patient correctly, all right? So here we go. I've got an expanded section. If I need to put in an admit date or a location or change the doctor, add a, a auxiliary provider, referring physician, uh, a billing note, I can do that. That information is usually um, hidden just to save screen size, but I can toggle that on or off either way, right? Uh, one thing that a lot of people do like to do is they like to put in the room number. And what this does for me is it makes it easy for me to know where that patient is. So if I'm, if I'm rounding on that patient, I can come back and see them later. So for example, I'll hit Save It in Progress, and you'll see there he is. Julio Jones is right there on my list. It makes it easy for me to see that patient, easier for me to come back and see that patient later. And that patient will show up on a patient reconciliation list. And for the, uh, the back office employees, they typically use that patient reconciliation list to go over, register the patient in the practice management system and so that they can assign that patient a, uh, a patient ID um, in Excel and Mobile so, so that the charges can post correctly. So that's, a, that's a great question. There's always a way for you to add those uh, add those patients in uh, on the fly if necessary. If necessary, that's a great question. All right, let me let me do this. Let me um, let me stop there and answer any questions that you may have. Again, the questions panel should be on the far right.